With the release of Herman Prime, obviously the way you invest in Archer Commanders has definitely changed and in today's video, I'm going to be updating my Archer investment plan, discussing the earliest stages of the game up until Season of Conquest. So if you're an Archer main player looking to make your account as strong as possible and work on your commanders and make them more powerful and even optimize your marches if you're in Season of Conquest, you want to stick around till the end of the video. Now let me quickly start off today's video by saying that when we talk about the commanders and investments in today's video, most of it will be related to free to play low spenders, but I will give some mentions to whales on some things you can do to improve your account as an archer main because there are going to be some noteworthy commander investments especially, which you may get over a free to play low spender that a free to play low spender wouldn't really get. So I'll discuss those a little bit separately, but they will be a part of the video. So if you're a whale as well, I will be giving you advice in that regard. But most of today's video will be more related to free to play low spenders, though there will be some whale related content in there. So now with that out of the way, let's get right into the earliest stages of the game. This is pre KVK one and we'll start off with the civilization. I recommend just picking Britain to begin with because you get access to Boudicca and also you get stuff like extra troop training speed, which will be good. Boudicca is a peacekeeping commander, which means day one, you have a good commander to just fight barbarians and you can't complain about that. As for really early game commander focuses, your real only option unless you're a whale is a Herman with a Kusunoki, because Herman and Kusunoki are the two main epic archers you can access that are strong. Kira is really difficult to access in the early game, you won't even have her near expertise till like KVK2 or halfway through KVK1. And Imhotep is a good supporting commander if you're running like 3 to 4 marches, but he's really really useless otherwise because he doesn't have much damage, there's not much like things that make him stand out for the open field besides his debuffs and his support in there. So really, Imhotep, strong commander but not the type of commander you definitely want in your motorball unless you have multiple marches. So I'd focus more Herman and Kusunoki and for the really really early parts of the game just as a quick tip, try and level up your peacekeeping commanders and your gathering commanders as well. The next thing I'd like to discuss for the early game is also equipment, especially archer equipment. Obviously, today's video is about that. And what I recommend early game, super simple, just try and fill out all your equipment slots. There are some worthy mentions here that you want to try and focus on and get really quickly. Sturdy boots are the first one, pretty much super easy to get, they're super duper cheap and you could get these done probably day one or day two if you play really well. So sturdy boots. Really easy to get, you can put those on your march, you've got a march slot filled right there. Then I'd also make sure you want to try and get the commander's heavy armor as quickly as possible as well, because that is the probably the strongest blue piece of archer equipment in the game, and once again, it's really valuable and fairly easy to get. And the final thing I'd like to want to mention on are the leather gloves, another really easy accessible piece that's going to be really good. Other than that though, just try and fill out your archer set. There's always like a blue or a green piece for every single slot. Try and get those filled in as soon as possible. Trust me, you won't regret it. And you'll be able to do much better on the open field the quicker you've got a full set of armor in there. So get a helmet, a weapon, chest plate, gloves, legs, and boots and also possibly some accessories as soon as possible. So now with the really early stages of the game out of the way, pre-KVK1, we're now moving into KVK1 itself. This is where you start to see a lot more development with your account, and there's some noteworthy options here which are definitely going to influence your account for the future. The first one is whether or not you invest in YSG. He'll be a commander that you get access to on the Wheel of Fortune, probably like a week into your KVK1, and... This is where you make probably the most important decision. Do you invest in YSG or do you not? This is going to make the biggest impact on your account in the early and the end game. And personally, I think you can just go either way. I've always said this and it's a simple, simple, simple question to ask. Do you want really short term value or do you want to get some more long term value but suffer in the short term? That's the thing you have to come to grips with. If you want to make a lot of short term value, get tons of kills, KVK 1 and 2, you get YSG, you take him straight to expertise as soon as possible, and there's things you can still do with him in Season of Conquest. It's not like he's useless once you hit Season of Conquest in Season 3, he's still very good. But 
He's not better than some other commanders, which we will discuss later, which is a very, very obvious thing. So you either decide to get YSG or you don't. And if you do get YSG, you just put him with a Herman or a Kusunoki and you'd be perfectly fine. If you are a whale, you can consider putting Thutmose with YSG. I think by now you'll be able to buy him in the daily special offer and it'll be easier to access for whales. Free to play low spenders don't invest in Thutmose. Whales though, it's probably the best KVK one March with Thutmose with YSG absolutely shred. So whales, you're obviously going to get YSG. Put him with Thoughtmost, you got a good march. Free to play low spenders, you get YSG. Herman and Kusunoki, you've got a good march. If you do decide to skip YSG, which is what I would personally do because I want to get that long-term value, I just go the Herman with the Kusunoki and you've still got a very solid march in KVK1. May struggle in KVK2, but KVK1, it is perfectly fine. Also for whales, do consider you could get El Cid and you could also get access to a few more commanders that aren't necessarily archers, but they're useful. Commanders like Mehmed and Caesar, who will work with someone like El Cid. And a lot of these commanders will be available in the daily special offer and also the Mightiest Governor and Wheel of Fortune in KVK2. As for other things you can do for your account in KVK1 with equipment, really, I'd start to focus on more purple gear. By now, you should easily have a full set. One thing that should definitely be done in KVK1, first of all, get the Call of the Loyal. You've probably got an accessory slot on your march, and Call of the Loyal can fill that in for you. And the second thing you need to focus on is getting Flame Treads. This is probably the best epic piece of equipment in the game for archers, and you want to get that as soon as possible. It's really going to help your march a lot, and it's fairly cheap. It's a really, really cheap piece since it is the boot slot. So getting Flame Treads is really important. And then other than that, just try work on your epic revival set here. I recommend upgrading the chest plate last though, so don't get the revival plate until you've got all other three pieces right here. Helmet and the leggings are probably the two first, the gloves are the third, and then the chest plate will be the last option you upgrade to get all four set pieces. But remember, chest plate is last because the commander's heavy chest plate is actually better than the revival chest plate, unless you've got the full set bonus. The next thing for KVK1 is make sure you've got Ottoman Empire as well. This is the best civilization for open field fighting in general, and for archers, you get a special unit and 5% more health. You really can't go wrong with the Ottoman Empire. Pick that civilization at your KVK1. I'm pretty sure you get a civilization swap at City Hall 10, and it's going to do really well. So Ottoman Empire, KVK1, hands down, best civilization for Archer mains. There's pretty much no arguing about it. Maybe France for the healing speed, but I think Ottoman is going to save you more speed ups in the long run than France would in the short run. So Ottoman Empire, really, really good option for KVK1, and it's definitely going to help your trades. Other than that, there are some more generic things for combat you can do. First of all, there's boosts like a defense boost and troop expansions if you didn't know about those. And also you can try and get any Archer CD skin. Any skin that's giving you Archer stats in KVK1, especially if Archer's your only troop, will be really, really good. One last thing I would like to recommend for a lot of players that most people do not know is you want to try and focus on your lumber mills and your quarries along with your economic tech that is related to getting wood and stone. Because as an archer main, archers only take wood and stone to actually heal. So with your economic tech, focus on wood and stone gathering speed. It's definitely going to help you in the long run and focus on gathering wood and stone as well while also leveling up your lumber mills and quarries. I think farms and also gold mines should come as later priorities, not to say you shouldn't upgrade them, but I try and get your quarries and your lumber mills up to at least level 21 before you really start focusing on stuff like farms and stuff like gold mines. My final KVK1 recommendation is to try focus on your archer technology, try to reach this part of the technology tree, bodkin arrows and pavis, I think I probably butchered that, pavesiv, I don't know. So yeah, try upgrade those two technologies as much as possible, they are going to be very valuable, but do not neglect your cartography and do not neglect some of these other cheaper upgrades as well, not to mention medical corpse is also really good. So getting your military technology in a good spot while also focusing on your archer technology will obviously help your account drastically and is going to improve your trades and also is going to be more optimized than just leveling up everything equally, especially if you don't plan to run an infantry gray cav march in the early stages of the game. Siege, just ignore them forever, they're pretty much useless. So early game, get the Hanasari units, get up there in the basically Bodkin arrows and Pavis tech and you'll be in a really good spot. So now that you've made it past KVK1 and you're moving into Season 2, you do get access to two new commanders, and that is Edward of Woodstock and Tamiris. And really simply, both those commanders are completely useless for a free-to-play low spender. Don't even go near them. Don't even bat an eye. Don't look back. Just never invest in them. Continue running the same march as you ran in KVK1. 
Hohmann Kusunoki or like a YSG with a Hohmann or a Kusunoki, depending where your investments did go. If you are a whale, I don't recommend Edward of Woodstock, especially because he has no Season 3 and Season of Conquest value. Tamiris, though, is an okay investment. I have some marches, which I will recommend when you hit Season 3, where she will get some value. So Tamiris, not the worst investment if you choose to get her, either running Tamaris with like a Tutmaris or an El Cid, and then running your YSG with whichever commander is left over is a good option. You can also consider as a whale running YSG with Herman or Kusunoki, and then running Tamaris with like a Thutmose or El Cid, and that way you don't have to have both Thutmose and El Cid, you can just have one of them. Personally, I do recommend Thutmose, he is going to trade better. If you are an early game rally leader though, Edward Woodstock is a good option, actually probably the best option, and Edward of Woodstock with Tamaris as a rally and also open field combo is really strong. But I wouldn't go out of my way to get Edward of Woodstock unless you are a rally leader. Even as a whale, he's probably just not worth it for the one KVK. As for your equipment, I think that you should start working a little bit more into your purple set, especially get the full set done by now. I'd recommend talenting your flame treads. They'll be one of the later things that you upgrade. Also, I'd hope by now you can get access to the silent trial which is a really, really powerful accessory. Probably the best epic accessory. If you got lucky, you could also get Delane's Amulet and possibly replace Call of the Loyal if you do find that fitting for your march. Whales will find that Call of the Loyal is a little bit less useful because they have extra march speed due to better technology. But if you're a lost and a free-to-play, Call of the Loyal may be just a better option for the extra field sustain. Though Delane's Amulet is definitely a solid option and also Silent Trail, also really good. I'd recommend at least having Silent Trial and Call of the Loyal on your marches by the time you start KVK2. Also, I do recommend having the Golden Age as well on your marches at this point. I know it's not part of the Revival set, but obviously you've probably got a full Revival set. I think I did by the time I hit KVK2, and the Golden Age is just a good weapon to have. It's literally more stats than the blue weapon by 5%, so you can't go wrong there. So getting the Golden Age, working on your Revival set, talenting your Flame Treads, and getting yourself the Silent Trial, and also running it with Call of the Loyal, and you'll be in a really good spot. I know it sounds like a lot, but all of that is purple equipment, it's fairly easy to do, and you'll have a lot of access to those blueprints in the early game between events, and also just your crystal keys. So it should be pretty easy to get that equipment, even though it does sound like a lot, it is a lot less than it actually is. One last note for Season 2 is that VIP is going to become increasingly more important, even though it is very important in the early game, by the time you hit Season 2, you want to be pushing your way into VIP 12, especially if you do spend your gems right, it should be pretty easy. So Season 2, even in the early game, I recommend pushing to VIP 10 as soon as possible, but by the time you hit Season 2, you should be pushing your way into VIP 12, if not at least VIP 11. So try push that VIP with most of your gems. I think equipment is obviously important, but VIP is going to be much more important as you get more gold heads per day, which will improve your gains in Season 3 and Season of Conquest. So work on your VIP throughout the game, but in Season 2, I think it takes an emphasis on trying to push your VIP 12, which will be your first major, major VIP milestone besides VIP 10. But VIP 10 is relatively cheap compared to 12. I think 12 might be 350,000 VIP points, where VIP 10 is like 100,000. So it should be a little bit of a grind to hit level 12, but when you hit it, trust me, it's going to be worth it. So now that we've made it to the end of Season 2 and we've moved into Season 3, this is where you get access to every single Archer Commander in the game. Every Commander ever released, besides Lu Bu, is going to be in Season 3. And here's what I'd recommend doing for pretty much every single account. First thing I'd recommend is just getting Herman Prime. Whether or not you got YSG, Herman Prime is still the best option. Herman with YSG, there's tons of synergy there. Herman's got AoE of his own, Herman boosts AoE damage, and he's also got up to 15% all damage reduction, not to mention a lot of march speed. And if you have YSG, you'll notice YSG has no defense, he has no march speed, and he needs damage reduction. So Herman is pretty much the best pairing with YSG, not to mention Herman boosts AoE skill damage, YSG obviously deals with some of the highest AoE damage in the game, not to mention YSG is a rage engine, Herman definitely needs a lot of rage, and YSG deals a lot of skill damage, which Herman can obviously benefit from with his AoE. So if you got YSG, you get Herman Prime, you run Herman Prime as the primary, and you've got a really solid march. Also, if you did get YSG, do keep in mind he has a museum relic, and that should be your main focus 
for museum relics since any stats you can get on your YSG for pretty much currency you don't really care about is really important. So get that YSG relic to double relic as soon as possible to improve your YSG by a lot. The last thing I'd also like to discuss is commanders for people who didn't get YSG and if you didn't get YSG really simply as a free to play low spender you run a Zulang with a Herman. That's going to be your strongest KVK3 march. It's going to be very, very powerful. It's going to be probably the strongest march in the game, if not the second strongest, depending on which commanders you think are stronger. So Zulang primary with Herman secondary, and you're in a great position. You saved all your gold heads. You can probably almost double expertise both those commanders, and they're just going to shred on the open field. They pretty much win in every single march duel, and they've got double AoE. Herman's got some of the best debuffs in the game, not to mention, like I said, his march speed, which Zulang really needs. Since Zulang is like a better version of YSG, he needs march speed, he needs damage reductions. Herman brings all of that and boost Zulang's damage by a lot. So there's a lot of synergy between Zulang primary and Herman secondary, and they're going to work really well together. As for a whale though, if you are a whale who got Tamiris, Herman with Tamiris, and then a Boudicca with the Zulang, you're in a great position for two marches in Season 3. Should be fairly achievable as a really, really big whale. Maybe not so much for smaller whales, but if you spend a lot of money, you can easily get Boudicca maxed and Zulang maxed. And also Herman in a good position with your already expertise, Tamiris. If you didn't get Tamiris, as a whale, you can still run a Zulang with a Herman. And then in the daily special offer, you can buy someone like YSG or Artemisia, depending on whether or not you have YSG expertise. And then you could run them with Boudicca. So you could run something like a Boudicca with a YSG, that's very solid. Or you could run something like a Boudicca with an Artemisia, which is probably Boudicca's best march. So... Keep those pairs in mind, you could run around two pairs in Season 3 as a whale, and it would be very, very reasonable. Now, as for equipment in Season 3, this is where you start to move into the Legendary Equipment tier. Everything here is pretty much going to be Legendary, and there's two ways you can go with your equipment. The first method is the 2-2-2 method, which is where you get two pieces of KVK equipment, two pieces of Dragon Breath equipment, and two pieces of Leadership equipment. And the other method is just getting a full Dragon Breath set. We'll start off by discussing the 222 method. The way the 222 method works is you get the KVK weapon, which is the Hydra's Blast Bow. You want to try and get this. I think you can't access it till Season of Conquest, but to keep that in mind. And also you can get access to the Ancestral Mask of the Night in Season of Conquest. So this means for your legendary equipment in Season 3, don't make the weapon and don't make the helmet from any set. Then you want to work on your Dragon Breath Chestplate and your Dragon Breath Gloves. They're also part of the 222 set. And the final bits are your Leadership Leggings and your Leadership Boots. This is, from what I've heard, the strongest legendary set of equipment for archers in the game. And it's going to probably give you the most stats. Do keep in mind, though, it's a little bit more complicated than going a full Dragon Breath set, which is almost guaranteed value. If you go for the 222 set, you are looking into... A little bit of a mix-up with stats right there. Some are giving you a little bit more, some are giving you a little bit less, but they're more premium stats. So you're kind of trading off the higher number for a better quality of stat when you go for that 2-2-2 set. So keep that in mind, but I personally would, as a newer player to the game, go for the leadership, the normal Dragon Breath, and the KVK weapons because you've got a clean slate to work with. You can just make a full brand new set of equipment, 2-2-2 sets are really easy to do because you have no legendary equipment already. And if you do, you hopefully made something that you can still work with. So maybe you made the Dragon Breath Chestplate, then you make the gloves, and then you make the leadership set, and then you make the KVK weapon. One thing I would recommend in order to craft the gear, just for the first three pieces especially, I'd make the Dragon Breath Chestplate, the leadership leggings, and then the leadership boots last. So that's what I'd recommend. After that, you can make the Dragon Breath Van Braces. You've got four pieces of legendary equipment, and your last two will be your KVK pieces. I think this is very expensive to do in one KVK. It probably won't happen, but at least making the Dragon Breath Chestplate and the leadership leggings, and you'll be in a really good position. Do keep in mind, Dragon Breath Chestplate, leadership leggings, only really available from basically ways to spend gems. So getting Fragment Choice Chest, doing things like Hunt for History, or Esmeralda's Prayer. They aren't available in Crystal Chest, anything like that. You have to mainly spend gems to access these blueprints. As for other optimizations that could have happened while you're in Season 3, trying to fully talent an epic set to put on a second march for the future is a good idea, and continuing to make more accessories to at least have four. So I'd recommend two Silent Trials and two Call of the Loyals, or a Silent Trial and a Delane's Amulet, 
in a silent trial and a Delane's amulet, or a silent trial and a call of the loyal, and a silent trial and the Delane's amulet will be good for two marches. So I have four accessories available for two marches. Since when we move into Season of Conquest, you're definitely going to start looking at two, possibly even three marches. So now that you've made it out of Season 3 and you've made it to the final stage of the game, you made it to Season of Conquest. First, let me congratulate you. And second, let me tell you about your commanders once again. And here's what's really going to change. If you did get YSG, Boudicca with YSG is going to be your next investment. You take Boudicca up to 5551, which is her first three skills maxed. Don't max that fourth skill, and then you put it with your YSG. You've got a really, really solid march. After that, you invest in Zulang, and you invest in Herman. Both those commanders, obviously going to be really, really strong. Put them together, you've got a very powerful murder ball. So those two marches will do well together. Put your weaker set of equipment on the Herman, in my opinion, because he doesn't need it as much as your Boudicca YSG will need it. Give your Boudicca the better gear. Also, do keep in mind with Herman and Zulang, they're going to be your main DPS march, so try and keep them alive mostly, but also don't lack on that Boudicca YSG. It's still going to do really, really strong, so make sure your talents are in order. I recommend a talent tree like this without latent power, and also with your Herman and your Zulang. I recommend Zulang has a talent tree a little bit more similar to this. If he's run with Herman, Naked Rage is really good. And then the rest of his stuff in here is just very stock standard. Venomous Sting, Feral Nature, really simple talent trees right there. So do focus on those talent trees, copy the ones I gave you, and you'll have a very, very powerful too much murder ball. For players who didn't get YSG, simply you can run Boudicca with Henry, Boudicca with a Sherbani Pal, Boudicca with Artemisia, any of those marches will work. Also, you can consider running Herman with something like a Sherbani Pile and then running a Boudicca with a Zulang. Those two marches do work as well. You can also somewhat consider backwards investing in YSG at this point and then putting him with your Boudicca. I don't necessarily recommend it, but it is also an option. Now, as for Wales, you're probably moving into three marches. What I'd recommend for three marches is a Sherbani Pile with Herman Prime, Boudicca with a YSG and then Zulang with like a Henry. You can also consider Henry with YSG and Boudicca with Zulang and all three of those marches are going to be really solid on the open field. And as a whale, I'm presuming you've got a cav march and an infantry march as well. And your three archer marches there will support those marches really well and trade very, very well too. Now, as for Season of Conquest equipment, your priorities mainly stay the same. The only differences are you get access to the Hydra's Blast and the Ancestral Mask of Night. And the last thing you get access to are two new accessories. You get access to the Horn of Fury and the Ring of Doom. And for your priorities, I think they remain the same. Try and get the full legendary set, the 2-2-2 set. Also though, try and get the Ring of Doom and the Horn of Fury fairly quickly. I mean, they're probably a little bit stronger than just getting base equipment, so they maybe should become your priority. Focus on the Ring of Doom or focus on the Horn of Fury. In my opinion, Horn of Fury is better for most of the marches for archers. Herman with Zulang is going to be really good with Horn of Fury. Anything that doesn't have a YSG really is going to be good with Horn of Fury. You can consider not putting Horn on something like a Boudicca though, because she does have the skill tree. Even Zulang may not need the Horn of Fury, but I feel like Boudicca is able to stick into combat a little bit longer than Zulang. Zulang often has to run away. So Horn of Fury, really good in Herman Zulang, decent on Boudicca, definitely needed on any march with Henry. So get the Horn of Fury. Trust me, you won't regret it. And then for marches that have something like Boudicca and things even maybe like Zulang Herman, Ring of Doom could be your first choice. So just see, do you notice your marches are getting their active skills off quick enough or are they too slow? If you find they're too slow, get the Horn of Fury. If you find it's sufficient, get the Ring of Doom and you'll get a much better trade. So now that you've made it to the end of today's video, I really do hope it was quite useful to you. And if you did find today's video useful, consider subscribing to the channel. It does support me a lot as a content creator, and also it means you will see more of my guides and advice. Hopefully the guide today was useful to early game players as well. I know I'm not in the early game, so maybe I did make a mistake or two about when commanders release, but I'm pretty sure I got everything right. So if I did get anything wrong, let me know in the comments. But mainly guys, do consider subscribing to the channel. It really, really supports me. You'll also notice that you see a little bit more of my content so that you can get more advice for the late game in Rise of Kingdoms and even some early game advice like today's video. Now, I just want to say I thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.